The evolution of sexual intercourse, including how it started in humans, is a complex topic rooted in evolutionary biology and shaped by various factors over millions of years. It's not just about reproduction, but also about social bonding, pleasure, and the development of mating strategies. In different cultures and societies, it is taboo to talk about human reproduction. Somehow it is important to understand that we are also part of it, and our next generations need to understand how it happened, how historically we were, and what dangers we are facing in the modern world due to our new evolutions in this regard. We need to educate our youth in all aspects of this subject, as the world is drastically changing. New sicknesses are emerging. All of us have to be aware of all that. Negligence could lead, and I believe, in some areas of the world is producing dramatically painful tragedies in societies. Our tomorrow starts now. Hello, friends. I am Czar, trying to educate the common man in this world. Many of us wonder how the humans started or came to know that they can reproduce others like them. Well, there are a lot of stories and myths based on religions, cultures, etc. Let us break down what I understand and can tell you about it. How did humans use to mate? The results suggest that people deliberately sought partners beyond their immediate family and that they were probably connected to a wider network of groups from within which mates were chosen in order to avoid becoming inbred. Who did the first human mate with? Neanderthals. The introgression events into modern humans are estimated to have happened about 47,000 to 65,000 years ago, with Neanderthals and about 44,000 to 54,000 years ago with Denisovans. Neanderthal-derived DNA has been found in the genomes of most contemporary populations, varying noticeably by region. However, prehistoric societies, recent anthropological data suggests that the modern concept of lifelong monogamy has been in place for only the last 10,000 years. Humans aren't sexually monogamous in the sense that many birds are. Geese form lifelong couples and virtually never mate with anyone except their partner. Historically, humans tend to be close to monogamous, but it is not a hardwired trait, and some people will tend to be polygamous. Culture plays a huge role in how people view sexual relationships, which is largely independent from genetics and evolution. Socially imposed monogamy was first established in ancient Greece and Rome, even if sexual infidelity with concubines and slaves was largely tolerated. Recent anthropological data also suggests that the modern concept of lifelong monogamy has been in place for only the last 10,000 years. Then the question rises, is that curiosity a factor? Curiosity is so ingrained, it helps us learn as babies and survive as adults. As for the definition, there is in one set in stone. Researchers across many disciplines are interested in curiosity, so it's no surprise there isn't a widely accepted definition of the term. How did the first humans reproduce? While anthropologists and evolutionary biologists can't be precise, all available evidence suggests that humans have understood that there is some relationship between copulation and childbirth since Homo sapiens first exhibited greater cognitive development, sometimes since the emergence of our species 200,000 years or more ago. If you like my content, kindly motivate me with your subscription, sharing, and hitting the like button. I'd love to read your comments as well. Let us get back to the topic. Are humans the only animals who mate for pleasure? No, definitely not. Bonobos and other primates will have sex while pregnant or lactating, seemingly just for the joy of it, while short-nosed fruit bats engage in oral sex to prolong their bouts of intercourse. There might be evolutionary reasons for this, but it could also be for fun. From our human ancestors to determine what age our ancestors procreated, according to the study, the average age that humans had children throughout the past 250,000 years is 26.9. Fathers were consistently older at 30.7 years on average, whereas mothers were 23.2 years on average. Did they have midwives to help them 
who knew from experience to cut the umbilical cord, or they knew to wait for the placenta to be delivered. Early humans, especially before herding was practiced, didn't know about conception. What is the reason then to hide the privacy during mating for humans? Why don't animals do that? At the ultimate level, concealed mating allows an individual to maintain two needs that would otherwise conflict, mating control over his, her partner is, and cooperation with those group members that are prevented from mating with these partners. You can also find the same in some animal groups as well. Seems like nature or they have seen their ancestors. It is debatable as well. That is what humans might have learned with time from religions, cultures, and from the norms of their respective societies or told by their elders. Might be love or ego or to let others know that someone belongs to him or her. But did love exist? From an evolutionary viewpoint, it suggests its gradual formation through the process of natural selection, although perhaps homeothermic animals, birds, etc. Perhaps cuddling was a reason that they came to know what to do next. From an anthropological perspective, physical touch, including hugging and cuddling, has served as a mechanism for survival. Early humans relied on physical closeness to maintain warmth, provide protection, and signal trust within social groups. At what age can a human fall in love? Hmm, unfortunately, there's no magic age where you can definitively fall in love. There are some adults who have not learned what love really is. It's more about being capable than it is about age and having the important components, intimacy, mutual support, companionship, and wanting to be together. Well, it can be hemophilia, emotional promiscuity scale, mostly existing in closed societies today, where most humans are not economically independent and take it as a social connection or economic benefit. Well, this was existing in early humans as well, with the same wills to reach their goals. Today, the tendency to fall in love fast and easily, it is a want process, not a need process. It is associated with a rush of falling in love and rapid romantic attachment. Was it there at that time? Well, I do believe it was existing in more primitive ways or thoughts. Or should we believe that humans were born with pre-knowledge? Are humans born with pre-existing knowledge? Innatism is an ancient philosophical argument contending that humans are born with pre-existing knowledge or ideas. This idea was first recorded in ancient Greece, most notably by the philosopher Plato, who believed that the human soul learned and retained information that helped newborns perceive reality. Well, in the early 60s, birth control pills and other artificial stuff exploded the human mind to have fun and no babies with sex, producing and commercializing the human body in films, pictures. That evolutionary trend went beyond thoughts, creating millions of jobs and products to take care of their skin, organs, and curiosity in their own bodies more deeply. Humans have gone so far that a man gave birth. In today's world, Beatty came out as a trans man in early 1997. Beatty had gender-affirming surgery in March 2002 and became known as the pregnant man after he became pregnant through artificial insemination in 2007. Beatty chose to be pregnant with donated sperm because his wife Nancy was sterile. Modern sexual intercourse can have various side effects, ranging from physical discomfort and potential injuries to emotional and relationship impacts and the risk of STIs and unintended pregnancy. While sex can also offer benefits like stress reduction and improved mood, it's crucial to be aware of both the positive and negative aspects. The effects of sex can vary significantly from person to person, depending on factors like age, health status, and relationship dynamics. Open communication with a partner about sexual health and preferences is crucial for a positive and safe sexual experience. Repetitive or forceful sexual activity can cause injuries, especially in individuals with pre-existing conditions. 
For some, lack of sex or issues with sexual function can lead to anxiety, depression, or relationship problems. Excessive sexual activity can be a sign of an underlying issue, like a hypersexuality disorder. So being respectful and close to nature is my personal advice. The evolution of human sexual intercourse is a story of biological adaptation and social development. It involves the transition from asexual to sexual reproduction, the emergence of internal fertilization, and the development of complex mating strategies influenced by social and cultural factors. Ultimately, sexuality is not just about reproduction. It also encompasses pleasure and the desire for social connections. Thank you for being with me. Maybe some people will not like my content due to their culture, religions, or society. However, I thought to educate people who are willing to know and have curiosity. Remember, curiosity is the key to knowledge. Your subscription, likes, sharing, and comments mean a lot to me. Keep me motivated to bring you new ideas about life, history, and our well-being. Have a good time till the next video. Bye-bye.